on this episode of China Uncensored, sticky rice and subverting state power in China. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. As you can see, I'm back in Cece Lee's kitchen. And you know what that means. Another long-winded talk about Chinese culture from me before you get the link to the delicious food. Unless you just go ahead and click the link below, but I know you wouldn't do that. You won't, because I'm about to tell you how the origins of this zongzi could undermine the rule of the Chinese Communist Party. You know, I don't feel China Uncensored is really that unique. If anything, I just view myself as one in a long line of Confucian gentlemen scholars who criticize the ruling regime. Now wait, isn't Confucianism that lame old philosophy that says you should do whatever the ruler says? Ho oh, ho ho, no my friend. Confucianism actually has a long tradition of the lonely scholar standing up to the ruler for what's right. Take my main man, Chu Yuan. Chu Yuan lived in one of the bloodiest, craziest periods of Chinese history, the Warring States period. A bunch of feudal states uh, warring as they tried to conquer each other. Chu Yuan was an advisor in the state of Chu. Their neighbor was the state of Qin. That's Qin as in the one that about a hundred years later will conquer its neighbors and set up the first dynasty to rule all of China. Anyway. The ruler of Qin contacts the king of Chu. He offers the king an alliance that will totally not result in conquest and assassination. Chu Yuan, who's an advisor to the king, is all like, Your majesty, this alliance is a really bad idea. But the king is like, You banished. While in exile, Chu Yuan learns of Qin's sudden but predictable betrayal and the complete destruction of Chu. He writes one of China's most influential and epic poetic works called the Li Sao, or Encountering Sorrow. And then he drowns himself in a river. And though Chu Yuan was not a Confucian himself, for thousands of years Confucian scholar officials looked to him as an exemplar, known for his fierce loyalty to his king, but also, paradoxically, his individualism and absolute commitment to his values. Interestingly, the Chinese Communist Party in its early days promoted Chu Yuan as a model of patriotism. They even used his whole criticizing those in power philosophy to criticize the ruling Nationalist Party. But once the CCP took over and became the ruling power themselves, things were a little different. Actually, Mao Zedong often talked about modeling himself after his favorite historical emperor, Qin Shi Huang. Yes, that's the guy who united China under the Qin Dynasty. And Qin Shi Huang famously burned books with competing ideologies, including books from the state of Chu. But fairly recently, ancient bamboo scrolls from the state of Chu were discovered. And guess what? They talk about a form of Confucianism that believes officials should be chosen by merit. They even suggest the ruler should be chosen based on merit, instead of the hereditary system that came to dominate China's dynasties later on. In other words, Unlike what the Communist Party says today, the Chinese might have been ready for an early form of democracy, or at least genuine meritocracy, 2,500 years ago. If you'd like to learn more about Chu Yuan and his impact, I highly recommend the book Mad Men of Chu by Lawrence A. Schneider. Anyway, Chu Yuan has been honored for generations. One way is the annual Dragon Boat Festival. It's celebrated with dragon boat racing and a steamed sticky rice dish called zongzi. What does that have to do with Chu Yuan? As the story goes, after Chu Yuan threw himself into the river to commit suicide, local villagers raced out in boats to recover his body. When they couldn't find it, they began throwing zongzi into the river so the fish would eat that instead of Chu Yuan's body. In other words, the Dragon Boat Festival celebrates a man who believed that people should stand up to authority in order to do what's right. And in the eyes of the current Communist Party, isn't that subversion of state power? So today I'll be joining Cece Lee from Food Paradise to show you how to make zongzi. Cece? Cece? Yes, oh, I didn't want to listen to your long conversation, so I went ahead and clicked this link. Oh boy, they were so tasty. You ate them without me? Sorry, you seem busy. Hey guys, well, if you want to learn how to say the name, 
songs are in Chinese and also the names of other Chinese snacks and as well as general useful Chinese words and phrases, check out my channel, Learn Chinese Now! <laughs> if you want to see me what Ben and Chris's butts making zhongzi, make sure you check out our video on Off the Great Wall. Yeah, that's not how it's going to go down. Totally not. Anyway, I'm Chris Chappell. I'll see you in all three of these videos. Really good. Oh my god, this is really good. So whenever you guys are ready. Three, two, one. Bye Ben. Go, 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 go! The dragon boats, by the way, are called Long Zhou, not Long Chuan, as you may have expected. Zhou is an earlier, more classical word for boat. Another thing that the locals did when Chu Yuan jumped in the river was to throw the traditional food zongzi into the water 